cord, a little notch in the bottom corner there, lines up with the notch on that pole there. Press it in, a little eighth turn locks it in. Your cord will have some thread, a threaded ring on it to really lock it into place. And as you follow the cord back, you can see it's just a standard 30 amp end. Most campsites are gonna have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. Now, if you're looking to plug in at home, to say a 15 amp, 15 amp outlet for running your fridge, charging your batteries, we do provide you with an adapter. That adapter is right in here, along with the water hose we provide you with. So you can see standard end right there, and 30 amp end right there, so you can plug into your house. And beside of here, you've also got your cord. And so again, 30 amp end there. And at the end of your cord, you do have that locking ring. Sewer hose right at the end here. So 20 foot hose, take note of these two ears right there. That's how you hook it up to the system. And then the other box in here is just the box for your TV. So for winter storage or whatever, if you wanted to pull it out. And so right down here, your sewer cap, just turn that off, pull it back and there you go. So those same ears there, hold the cap on. And you're gonna install your hose the same way, just onto there, lock it into place and there you go. On the right here, you've got the black valves signifying your black tank. So when it comes to dumping out your tanks, you're going to want to do that black valve first. The black tank is filled from your toilets, which of course dirtiest water. Beside it here, we've got the gray. So gray is filled from your sinks as well as your shower. So generally cleaner water. So once the black's done, then you'll open up that gray as you're dumping it all out. Over time, you may go to dump out your black uh, tank and it's just not going to read properly at the monitor panel. So what you'll do is you'll just take your water hose and plug it into there, open up that black valve. Turn on this black tank flush and that'll just clean out that tank for you and give you better, more accurate reading. I'm moving down again. So you're in the ground here, you just got your fresh tank empty. So as you open up that gate valve, it just dumps out your fresh water tank. And we'll dump that right out for you. Two knobs there, just push those back, you can open up, you've got access to your valves. Pour it down, I'm just gonna pull it straight on. Now we can show that you've got your change over right here. So you can see that's currently green, just letting you know that propane is in the system and ready to go. If it were to go red, it's letting you know that this tank's now empty, no more propane there. I'm just gonna take it over and switch it over. So that bad arrow right there is pointing over to the tank that you're drawing off. Right back here in this little black box is your battery. So as long as you're plugged into that short cord, that battery is charging for you. And on the side, you can see you've got your front patio door here. We'll get there in a minute. Your hot water tank right here. So this keyway, just line that up, pops open, pull it up, and it's out of your way. Before you ever turn it on, the controls are just inside. But before you turn it on, you want to hit that relief valve right there and make sure that bit of water comes out. A bit of water coming out is just letting you know that it is full and it is safe to fire it up. Bottom left corner is your electric uh, switch there, so just turn that on, turns on the hot water tank with electricity. Propane is just inside and I'll explain the reset procedure once we're in there, but the reset button is just this one on the right right there. Line up those two holes in the pins, put it back in place and there you go. On the left here is your fresh water tank fill, so you take a water hose, stick it into there, fills up your fresh water tank. Right beside it's your furnace, so if you're ever running your furnace, you just want to make sure nothing's drooped over this, it does get hot. Also, right down here, uh, if you just reach up a little bit right at my hand here, I've got two low point drains there. So one's blue, one's red, one's of course cold, red is hot. So if you're looking to drain out the water from the trailer, just open up those valves and dump out all the water. Right back here, you've got two GFI protected outlets. Resets inside in the bathroom. Moving our way on back, we've got an outside shower here. So if the dog's out getting muddy, you can spray them off. Hot and cold water, three foot hose, standard head. You will get one of these little keys here. This little 751. And then in the very back, City water connection. So you take a water hose, plug it into there, turn on the water, pressurize the lines of the trailer. And then in the center here, we've got cable on the left, and satellite on the right. So just a coax cable, plug it into there, and fire up your TV location. Now, when entering the trailer, you of course will have keys for both the rear and the front door. I've only got keys for the rear door, so we're going to enter back here. 
both sets of stairs are just the same. You grab that first handle and the second handle, just both flip over. As you open up your door, you can see in the back you've got this little T-latch. Just holds it open, especially on days like today where it's kind of windy. And we'll come on inside. This unit does have two uh, switches for its slide outs. However, the slide outs are both linked in together hydraulically. So as we press out, slides will make their way out. You'll see first this slide goes out and then as it exposes the door, you can go and open that up and you'll see the other slide will start opening up as well. As hydraulic slides you're not really going to hear a click from any electric motors you just kind of hear the whine of that motor and down below your slide switch the light on the left is your ceiling lights back here the switch on the right is your porch light right above your head here and then back here of course all the drawers are just storage and storage the bed also does pick up Exposing your uh, storage compartment there. In the back by your heads, you do have the 120 volt outlet as well as USB charging ports and more storage at the top. These lights here just on their own little switch. The one in the center is on its own center push button and the same light in the right there. Closet here, so all the closet space with the hanger up top. And then of course more drawers along the bottom. Right down in the wall here, if you just press that top and center, we've got your converter here. So all of your breakers in the center, whenever a breaker breaks, it'll sit in the middle. So just turn it off and then back on. And all of your fuses on the right. If a fuse were to ever pop, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one's blown. Into the hallway, the switch here is just your hallway light come into the bathroom. So right on the wall here, the light on the left is your ceiling light. The light on the right is kind of your vanity as well as your uh, roof vent here. So just take that knob, turn to open. And if you want that fan off, you also got the switch in the corner as well. Toilet's just got the little foot pedal to the right with more storage space in here. We do provide you with the toilet paper holder. We do not mount it just because personal preference. The shower here with the deluxe shower head. So you get the five interchangeable modes. Otherwise, right down beneath your vanity here is your water pump and your winterization setup. So not too much storage underneath the sink. However, it is right behind you. And the GFI reset, like we were talking about earlier, so test on the bottom, reset on top. So if you ever have an outlet that doesn't work, it's a good thing to come and check right here. And in the hallway down on the floor here, you just got your vacuum. So you open that up, stick your hose into there, power button on the bottom, and clean up. Thermostat up here as well. So on the bottom is your mode and power. So just click that and it'll cycle through. So of course, first we got your fan speed at low, which will turn on your air conditioning fan just on the low speed. And then of course high. After fan, it'll go into cool with the high fan or cool into low with fan or in auto, in which case it'll cycle on and off between running the fan or not based on your temperature. Arrows here, just selecting your temperature is of course in Fahrenheit. So hit that again, you can go into heat, and that'll of course turn off your air conditioning fan and turn on your furnace. There we go. So your furnace is moving all of its air through the floor ducting. The air conditioner, basically two separate. air conditioner is moving its air through all of the roof ducts here with these louvers closed or you can open up these louvers and it'll just dump all of its air in here. Once you're done with the thermostat, 
after heat, just hit mode again, and it will just cycle to off and restart itself. So right here, just got the pantry. Up on the wall here is a switch between microwave and fireplace. So in being a 30 amp unit, you can't run both at the same time. It is one or the other. Residential fridge here with the travel lock. So just undo this little knob here, back it off. Whenever you're going traveling, you do want to make sure this is tightened back down. So we'll just come right around the corner here by your front patio door. You can see you've got your monitor panel here. So again, slide out both linked together, press out here, no difference, it's the same same switch basically. And bottom center is your ceiling lights all across the living room here. And on the left there's outside speaker, turns on a little blue LED at your outside speakers. The one on the right here is your awning light and the hot wa the water heater. So as I was saying, turn that on, you'll get that fault light right there. It comes on as you first turn on that switch, just to let you know that it is going to be turning on. Once it turns off, the ignition sequence has started. And if that light were to come back on afterwards, it's letting you know that it hasn't fired up. At that point, you'll be going and using that reset button that I was showing you earlier. So you can see that light's gone out. We had one click and that hot water heater's going now. And then on the very left there is your water pump. So turn that on, turns on the water pump, draws out of the fresh tank, pressurize the water lines. And then up at the top here, it's your systems monitor. So it tells you your battery charge level. So all the way up like that is of course charging. Two thirds would be good. A third would be fair and E is low. It tells you your fresh tank level. So as you filled it up, you'd go to third, two thirds and full. Same idea for your black one. You do have the black two button here. However, there is only one black tank in this unit. You also got the gray and your galley, but there is just the gray in this unit. Work all, all in the same idea as you fill them up to go to third, two thirds full. So this switch right on the wall there, if you turn that on, is your fan right above your head here. So this little switch right there, just direction down or up. And then this little pull string there is just your speed. So on the vanity right here, the light switch on the left gives you your little foot lights. The one on the right is the lights above your slides here. Also got a light right above your sink. More storage, of course. And then for your microwave, it is fairly well just a standard household type microwave, just bigger. And it does also have the addition of the light at the bottom as your stove light. And it's also got the vent here for your stove as well. So two speeds for it, two and one, and then off. Same idea for your lights, full, half, and off. For your stove, it's just got the bifold cover. Just flip that back. Turn the knobs over to the little flame and hit the sparker fires right up now the first time using it after a little while where you haven't been camping or using the trailer it may take a little second just to clear out the air from the system before it fires up but it will fire up so for the stove just open it up turn it over to the little flame hit the sparker and there she goes you're just going to hold that knob in for another couple seconds and then you can release it and it'll hold itself and then you can select your temperature and she'll come up to that temperature for you once you're done, bring it back down to the pilot and it'll hold the pilot light for you. However, if you're leaving the trailer for a while or going traveling, you want to make sure it's right off to the side here. So one, having it up, you just get the knobs there, having it to the bottom, you get the stove light as well as the knobs. And then to the front here, right beside your patio door, you do have your fire extinguisher. So standard, pull the pin, point and shoot. TV is on a mount, just pull that off the wall, point it wherever you like it. Pass for your connections for it, all right down here. So that auxiliary and satellite connection right there on the right is going to be your cable and satellite outlet from the back. And then in the center here, the one that is hooked up is your antenna. 
So wherever you're using that, you just want to turn that button on the bottom there on so that green light comes on. That'll turn on your antenna, giving your TV the uh, signal. And then right below it here is your sound bar, it's a power button, turns it on, It'll give you a screen right there. Hit mode, and it'll cycle through different modes. So we got radio here, volume of course, mute it. Zone one is the sound bar itself. Zone two is your outside set of speakers. Other than that, fairly self-explanatory. It goes very well, very nice sound bar. So turn that back off. And then right down here is your fireplace. So remember, you do have that switch there. So we'll come into the pantry and go from microwave down to fireplace. And then we can hit the power button on the right, turns it on. You set your timer, 30 minutes all the way up to I believe nine hours, five hours. And then center left here is your flame color. So you can have that blue, red, or orange. And then on the left is your temperature. So high, low, or off. That's that. Once you're done, press the power button. All good. So right here, this little blue binder contains all of your owner's manuals, as well as your two sets of keys. So that purple key is for your rear door, and this other key here is for your patio door. Another little center light there. More storage across the top. These lights here just got the little push buttons right kind of facing you. Same thing here. This light back here, just right there. And that's that. So any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call, 204-237-7272.